Welcome to Paint a Beautiful Picture. Today we're going to be talking about the principle of laying a firm foundation in your child's life. This was part two. So if you did not get to see last week's video, you might want to go back and look at it and get a sense of where we're going. Uh, if not, let me tell you that if you build a building, but you do not lay down a firm foundation, over time that building will move and things do not fit or work appropriately. Doors and windows don't open and close as they should. And oftentimes the, the top of the building will separate from the foundation. You'll have water damage, uh, rodents, and all kinds of insects can get in. You will have things that ultimately will destroy the building. Uh, look at the Leaning Tower of Pisa. You know, you can hardly stand inside of it because all of that was foundational. So we need to lay down a firm foundation in our child's lives. We need to take building blocks and put them down firmly so that our child will have a life that doesn't let in bad things or cause it to fall apart or make it to work improperly. And so I want to challenge you to lay a firm foundation down into your child's life. Another foundational principle that we want to put into our children's lives is gentleness. You know, you ever been with someone, they're just rough. Not just rough around the edges, but I mean rough, okay? Everything is do, they do is rough. They talk roughly. They act roughly. Another word for that would be coarseness. You know, they cuss like a sailor in front of little children. I was standing in a movie theater with my grandsons. They were like two and six. We're going to see a G-rated cartoon. And here's this guy in front of me using the F word and GD this. And I mean, wow, I couldn't stand it. I finally leaned over. I very gently touched his arm. And I said, sir, excuse me, please. Big, huge guy. I'm five feet tall, okay? Turns around, like, yeah. I said, do you notice who the little ones whom I have with me could you please not speak like that I mean he could have gone a lot of ways we all know that and he looked at me he said ma'am I'm really sorry he quit talking like that but I could tell this is just his normal vernacular he talks like this every day this is not a gentle person you want your child to be gentle okay I'm not talking a guy who's a sissy don't misunderstand me but Someone who is very capable of being gentle, okay? That has to do with the spirit of a person, and you can teach them to be gentle. You can do that by getting them a little kitten or a small puppy and teaching them to be gentle with that little one. I always used to love to take my kids to the petting zoo with all these little tiny critters. I remember my one son, he picked up this little duckling, and he went to grab it by the neck, and I, I said, stop and of course he did and I put my hand on his neck I didn't squeeze or anything I just put it there I said what if I try to pick you up like that and he goes mom and I said yes exactly so then when he bent over he put his hands around that little duckling and picked it up and he was very gentle with it you can teach a child the foundational principle of gentleness then you need to teach them the foundational principle of patience that means sometimes you need to instruct your child that you are going to wait for this. Uh, I, I just shared this with someone today. There's a little guy who has trouble eating his dinner. So I used to take one, not a whole package, but one now and later, put it out of their reach, you know, way across the table. And I'd say, once you finish this, you may have that. So they learn the concept of patience. I can't have that right now when I want it. I've got to wait. It's not just waiting like antsy and blah, 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 blah. It's waiting with calmness. You're not going to see that happen in a two or three year old. But if you continue to lay that principle down and you continue to instruct them in patience and demonstrate it to them, key, and allow them to experience it so they continue to grow in patience, they will learn to have a calm spirit in the waiting time. You need to lay the foundational principle of cheerfulness. <laughs> Let me tell you, I had a child who was a natural born grumpy person. Okay. Whoa. Yes, he was. And I would say, 
you have control over this. You can be just as grumpy as you want. And all you're going to do is make yourself miserable and you're basically attempting at least to make everyone else around you miserable. Who wants to be with a miserable person? I don't know anybody who goes, oh yeah, you know, I want my best friend to be just a miserable, grumpy, nasty human being. I've never met anybody who said that. You know, they want a nice, pleasant, cheerful friend. Hello, don't we all? And so if you want that, you need to be that. The same child of mine, we, I used to say, hey, we're going to the mall. We're going to this, we're going to that. I don't want to, you know, Eeyore. It's like, yes, well, whether you want to or not, you are. And you're not going to have this junky attitude in the car. You're not going to have this junky attitude the whole time we're there. So even if your internal attitude is, <laughs> keep your mouth shut and get in the car. You know, most of the time, within the first 15 or 20 minutes after we were gone, they were having a blast with us. They figured it out that just because it isn't your natural propensity to be cheerful, you can learn it. So teach your child to be cheerful to have control of their own spirit, and to have a cheerful attitude. It's very possible. Lay the foundation of cooperation. Uh, this is about doing things for the common good. It is not hardly ever all about you. You cannot, most people, trust me, grow everything you need, sow everything you need. You cannot provide enough everything for your heat by going out in the woods and cutting down trees. Even if you do, you did have to go by the saw or you did have to go by the chainsaw. You have to access the electricity somewhere. Even if you have a generator, someone else built that. We are not 100% able to take care of ourselves. We do need to have community. And that means we need to have a spirit of cooperation. When people need our help, when people ask us for something, when there are things going on in the world that aren't all about me, I still need to participate. I still need to contribute. I still need to do what I can do and cooperate. And your child needs to learn that principle of cooperation. Even if you have two children, you need to teach those children how to work together. That in that spirit of cooperation and in developing that foundational principle, it will work for them and it will contribute good things into their life for the rest of their lives. So you need to develop that attitude of cooperation, working together for the common good. Then, speaking of work, the next thing is diligence. Okay, I'm sure every single one of us have known people like this. I'm going to start with elementary school because as a teacher, I would deal with this. I, would, I had one student very notably, you give him a piece of paper, particularly in math, he would just write down any number and three minutes later hand you the paper and say he was done. And I'd say to him, Michael, did you try? I did my very best, Miss Newby. I'd say, okay, then tell me, I would take the paper away. I would say, tell me what these problems were about. What do you mean? What were they about? I don't have any idea. I said, I know. You don't even know if you were adding or subtracting, multiplying or dividing. You never tried. You didn't put any effort into this at all. And diligence is putting in effort. So if it's worth doing, it is worth doing well. That requires effort. That takes diligence. You need to lay that foundational principle into your child's life. If you ask them to go clean the bathroom and they take a cloth and they like run it across the edge of the sink, run it across the edge of the tub and don't even go near the toilet, that's not diligence. That's laziness. That's an unwillingness to do what needs to be done. So you go back in there. You say, oh no, this bathroom is filthy and I ask you to please clean it up. I'm not talking a five-year-old. I'm talking like a 12 or a 14-year-old. Oh, my word. And you say to them, you take the Ajax or the Comet and you sprinkle it in the tub and you get the cloth or the whatever you're going to be using, damp or wet, and you scrub out that tub. Do you see this ring? That might take a little bit of elbow grease. You've got to do this on their homework. 
you review their homework and they you can tell them they didn't even try. Their handwriting is really sloppy and pathetic. They missed three pages of the work because they did the first one, the last one. They didn't think you were going to be smart enough to check that out. Like, no, you did not do your best. You have to put some effort into this. This requires diligence. Then, this one. You must teach them the principle of self control. Okay. A lot of people go, well, I can just do whatever I want. It doesn't really matter. <sighs> yes, actually it matters a great deal. You can start teaching self control very early. Do you know when you start potty training a child, like they're 18 to 24 months old, that is self control of their bladder and self control of their bowels. When they are able to control their physical body, they are certainly able to begin to control their emotions and their thoughts. And you need to teach that to them. They urgently need this foundational principle. So they just start yelling and screaming and you say, stop. You need to talk to me. Even if you're angry, you can say, I am so angry about this, but you may not yell and scream. They start saying bad words, whether they've learned those bad words from you or they learned them from the kid down the street or wherever they heard them. And you say, that is not how we speak in our family. You may not use that kind of language here. They talk to you disrespectfully. Mom, I already told you. I beg your pardon, but you're right. I am the mom and you are not going to speak to me like that. You may talk to me. But you may not speak to me disrespectfully. You need to teach that child self-control. And you also need to teach them self-control and what's going into their body. If all they ever want to do is eat chocolate and eat donuts and eat sugar and eat candy, you need to tell them, I'm really sorry. You need to eat vegetables. You need to eat whole grains. You need to eat fruits. You need to eat things which are healthy for you occasionally you can have these things, but you're not just going to eat these. I made a batch of cookies, but you're not going to sit here and eat 16 cookies because you want to. You may have two, but then you're going to practice self-control and stop. So when that child develops self-control, that brings them to a place of self-respect and quite a level of personal internal strength. They need that foundation of self-control and they need a really strong level of this dependability. When you are consistent and you have a level of consistency within your home and your child knows I do this, I say this, I act like this, I don't do this, my parent is going to every single time. In other words, you're a person upon whom they can depend. When they say to you, mom, I really need, and they know you're going to meet that need, then they can depend up upon you. When they come to you and they say, dad, I'm in trouble, and they know, dad, that you're going to speak wisdom into their life, and you're going to have a solution, and you're going to help them find a way to get out of that, you are someone upon whom they may depend. You need to lay that foundation of dependability into their life. So you tell them, when you say to someone, I will, then you need to follow through and do what you said. You need to be a person who is dependable. Every single day, you need to get up and brush your teeth. Every single day, you need to eat a good breakfast. Each day, you need to do well in school. Each day, you need to do your homework. They are developing consistency and they are becoming a person who is dependable. So you need to lay that foundation of dependability into their life. I want to encourage you as a parent, and my challenge question is similar to last week. Have I laid down a foundation in my child's life? I want to assure you, you probably have, but it might not have been a firm foundation. And so I want to encourage you to lay a firm foundation in your child's life of great principles and great character qualities so that they will have a firmly established life 
that is secure and that functions at its optimum. Thank you for joining me today. You may find additional information on our paintabeautifulpicture.com website. Additionally, you may watch me on Rumble, and you may also listen to a podcast on Buzzsprout or Spreaker, all under the name Paint a Beautiful Picture. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. You may subscribe, and if you are interested in receiving notifications, please hit the notifications button.